Welcome to the sacristy. Welcome to the place in which we prepare all the vessels for the Mass. We're going to talk about the different vessels and what they do and what we will use them for in the Mass. But first, let's begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you give us so many good gifts, and we want to use them to give you glory. The vessels that we have here are to use to celebrate your sacrifice to the Father for us. Help us to understand the vessels and their significance in the Mass and in your Church. We ask this in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, the vessels that we use, we keep in the safe. And the safe is just to keep the vessels uh, in a place that we know they're, they're safe, and there's no danger of them being scratched or, or maybe taken without permission. But the main two articles that we use during the Mass is the chalice and the patent. So the chalice is a very ornate and beautiful cup uh, that we pour the wine and the water into and by the grace of the Holy Spirit it becomes the precious blood of Jesus. And the chalice must be of a precious metal and so the chalice, this chalice is uh, has a gold uh, coating on it so that that which is precious, Jesus' blood, is touching something that's precious uh, in our world, the gold. And so that's why the chalice is gold. The same goes for our patent, which is what the priest has the host in. And so right now we have hosts right here <laughs> and the priest host is just a little bit bigger than the host that you receive at mass so that when it's held you can see it you can see that what becomes Jesus is held high and at that moment when the priest holds the host like this it is Jesus but right now it's just bread but the patent, again, is gold to hold what is precious, the body of Jesus, in what is precious to humans, the gold. So we hold what is most precious in what is precious, or what we recognize as precious in the world. And those two articles, two vessels, are uh, the most prominent in the Mass. There are many other vessels, like... Saborium. Saborium are, again, generally some, so it can be gold or silver or some other precious metal, uh, but it holds the hosts that you receive when you receive Jesus. So these little hosts. Again, this is bread right now, but when the priest calls down the Holy Spirit and it becomes the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And so we put the host that will distribute at the Mass in the Saborium. Everything in the Church has a special name. So, Saborium, Patent, Chalice. They're special names because it has a special purpose. Uh, we're not just called boy or girl. You're called Jim or Kathy. You have a special name. And so, when something is special and significant, we want to give it a special name to designate that it's beautiful and special and good. There's many other things in the, the sacristy, but those are primary. As we prepare for the Mass, we set up those vessels. We also set up uh, the wine and the water in cruets. Cruets are, again, a special name that holds the water and the wine that becomes the body and blood of Jesus. And so the cruet is just a, a vessel that holds the water or the wine. The things that we 
have to protect Jesus uh, as the, the bread and the wine becomes his body and blood on the altar is we have a patent. Uh, this is a Paul, I'm sorry, a Paul that is placed on top of the chalice to protect the wine and soon to be precious blood of Jesus. Or to protect the bread which will become his body and just to cover it up and protect it from anything that uh, may or may not dust or sometimes bugs. Uh, it's just a protection. The next is a purificator. A purificator is a special cloth, uh, generally uh, cotton or um, cotton <laughs> that we use to wipe and protect Jesus' blood. Uh, we use it when we're pouring the wine into the chalice. Like this. And so when you pour the wine, it catches the, the wine so it doesn't spill down the side of the chalice. And then we use it to drink the precious blood once it's become Jesus and drink, and then we wipe the chalice. And then after the Mass, we'll purify the chalice. We'll pour water into it and make sure that we get all Jesus' precious blood out. And I use the purificator to guide the water along the chalice to make sure it gets all of Jesus' blood off of there. I'll then consume and then use the purificator to wipe the inside of the chalice to make sure that everything is clean and Jesus' blood is all consumed, or the little bit that's on the purificator, we then, at the end of the Mass, place in a container with water and a little bit of soap to allow it to soak. So then we can pour that water that has Jesus' blood in it into the ground and dispose of it in a good way. Uh, because we want to make sure that Jesus' blood is respected, even, you know, that little bit on the purificator, a little bit that uh, we're very cautious uh, of any fragment or any drop of blood or body that uh, may be left over. So this is the, the way in which we do that. After we let these soak, we'll pour the water into the earth and then wash them in a washing machine to, to get uh, any of the, the leftover and then just making sure that it's respected. Every aspect of Jesus is respected because he loves us so much and we want to respect uh, what he's given us. The altar cloth, which we talk about in the other video, is what we call a corporal. And so the corporal is just a big cloth that makes sure that whatever is on the altar is kept within this corporal. It's also a place where we place all the things, the bread and the wine, which becomes Jesus, so we can focus. And when we're praying the prayer of consecration, we're focused on everything that's on the corporal. So everything that's on the corporal by the Holy Spirit becomes Jesus' body and blood. So it's both to protect Jesus' body and blood, to make sure that any fragment or drop is on this corporal. But then also that we can focus our intention to consecrate that which is on the corporal. So this is, it's a twofold thing. And if I opened it up, you'd see the cross. We'll, we'll take it out uh, and I'll show it to you on, on the altar when we open it up uh, in the next video. That's the corporal. So that's pretty much it for the things that we use for the mass, but we have lots of other very interesting and good things that I want to talk about in uh, the sacristy. So, we have the monstrance. So the monstrance is a beautiful gold, uh, something to, to center our attention on what's right here, which when we place, there's a, an insert, so I'll show you this is the door. So you open the door, and you take the insert, which is a Luna, which has Jesus in it, and place it in there, and then you close it up. And so then 
when we see this on the altar and the priest's hands were focused on Jesus, which is right here. So this is a way to adore our Lord in adoration. We have Jesus exposed before us, generally in the monstrance. Uh, and so this is a great way to adore our Lord and spend time with him, to focus on him and how much he loves us. If you've been to a mass with incense, which may be a funeral or, uh, or a mass, we have different masses that have uh, more things involved, maybe Christmas or Easter uh, or Pentecost, you'll see the priest or the servers use incense. And so incense is the reminder of our prayers going up before our Lord. And so what we do is we set up a charcoal in the thurible. This is called a thurible. Uh, this is a spent charcoal, so I'll show you that. Uh, it's a charcoal that's burned out, and you can see the little pieces of incense in the charcoal uh, that has burned. And so we set the charcoal up before Mass, and then when we want to adore our Lord with the smoke from the incense, which is pleasing, uh, we take the incense, which is in this, we call it a boat, which is a very simple name, but it has the incense in it. And then we take some of the incense with the spoon and place it on the charcoals. And then the smoke will start to rise as our prayers rise before our Lord. The priest will bless the smoke and then take the thurible and generally wave it back and forth to allow the smoke to come out. And then whenever we're at a funeral or uh, during the Mass, we'll go around the altar or around the casket and let the smoke go up, uh, adoring the Lord in the, the person's remains in the casket, as well as uh, the Paschal candle and the altar, recognizing that our, our prayer should be focused on how the Lord is calling us to adore Him uh, through the incense and in the Mass. So that's the thurible, the boat, and the incense. I want to share with you something that's very, very cool. Uh, we have holy oils that are blessed by the bishop every year. And this year, Archbishop Lori blessed for us these holy oils. And so there's three holy oils. Uh, the oil of the sick, which is for the anointing of the sick. The oil of catechumens, which is for those who are generally infants uh, who are being baptized for the grace, asking for the grace of them to learn uh, about the faith and be opened to all God's grace that he wants to give them. And the most important is the chrism oil. Sacred chrism is used in baptism. It's used in confirmation and it's used for priest ordination. Uh, and it's it's got a fragrant odor. It's add, balsam is added, which is a spice. Uh, and it's used to, to show uh, that those who receive it are pleasing to the Lord. After you're baptized, you're anointed with the chrism oil on your the crown of your head. And it has a pleasing smell to remind us that by your baptism, you are pleasing to the Lord. You are now a son or daughter of our Lord. Uh, and, and that's a beautiful thing. And so we use the chrism oil. So every year, the excess oil is burned, and we are given new oil uh, every year. And it shows us the unity that we have with the bishop and with the church, because every bishop of every diocese bless these oils and then distribute them to the whole diocese. It shows you how uh, God builds up his church and blesses us uh, through his through these oils and through his Holy Spirit, uh, prayed over by the bishop every year. Um, so that's very cool. One of the things that we keep in the sacristy as well is the things that we need for baptism. Uh, and so baptism, we use the chrism oil, like I said, but just like my owl uh, that I wear before I put on mass, 
after a baby is baptized, they put on a white garment to represent that holiness that they've received, uh, that sanctity, that purity that they receive. And so we give them this white garment to show their dignity that God gives them in that baptism. There is the candle, which is uh, to show the light of Christ which they've received in baptism. And then the shell. Uh, the shell is used to scoop the water. So when you baptize, you say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and you pour water on their head, and of the Son, and you pour water on their head, and the Holy Spirit, and you pour water on their head. And so you use the shell uh, to do that. And so these are the, the things that we have for baptism. Uh, and there's many other things in this, this sanct uh, sacristy, uh, but we're just going to focus on those for right now. There's many beautiful things uh, that the church provides, and the sac sanc sac sac sacristy is uh, the place where they're kept. Uh, so I'm glad to share with you these different aspects, and I hope you uh, continue to learn about all the good things the Lord wants to give you. God bless you.